Welcome to the downside. Uh, my name is Joe Marco Sorezi. I was just I was gonna I was supposed to do like a, a a prank thing to you. What I wanted to do like that that thing I did last time where like I pretend we're ending a conversation, like right as we start recording. I was oh. gonna do something where by my well you can save it. You can save it. I'll save it. I'll save it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say last time? We something can't do like, it next week. But so I said like no, no, Russell. I don't think white people have it the hardest. Yes, yes. yes Welcome yes, to the yes, downside. Yes, yes. yes. I'll start it from there. Uh, yeah. My name is Joe Marco Sorezi. I'm here with my co-host Russell Daniels. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I feel like I never see you anymore. You're always you're you're gone. You're you're you were in Oklahoma, right? I was in Oklahoma. I was in Oklahoma City at the mm-hmm. Looney Bin. Mm-hmm. It's tough because we do this podcast, and sometimes I want to be like, "Well, let's hang out," but we've also just made time for each other right now. Yes, but, but just an hour. <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. Uh, well, we're here. Yeah, with uh, truly uh, uh, one of my favorite stand-up comedians in New York. Wow. Embarrassing to say, I mentioned you on a podcast the other day, and okay. uh, it felt very, very embarrassing. But I'm happy you're here. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy, uh, uh, happy to be here. Uh, Renan Hirschberg, welcome Renan to the Renan Hirschberg, that, thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> sure, sure. I made this just to have you on. We're going to end the podcast after this episode. Uh, um, can you can you say something negative so I can go into our theme music? Something bothering you? Something you don't like? Uh, well, you're always on, so I was wondering what you'd be like on this podcast. It seems like you're even more on than usual. <laughs> <laughs> this is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. I think with John Marco Cerezi. You're, you're an on person, too. Like... Yeah, we both sure, have like sure. we if we get into the ranty thing it yeah, becomes yeah, course, you know like course. this. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm on. I mean, I'm mean, like yeah, I don't Yeah, like feel it. free to bring something to the show <laughs> today. Uh, <laughs> uh uh well, I was I was in Oklahoma City. Have you ever been to the Looney Bin? Sure, that's the first place I ever featured at. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. I I used to they were my first feature gigs at Looney Bin cuz I I couldn't get work in my hometown. And that, so What's just, in Kentucky, right? There was like the Comedy Caravan. Uh-huh. Was that just too is that just well? I eventually got work there, but in the beginning, you know, they see you start out, so it's like tough. You got to go to another. That's how I feel ta- about all of New York, yeah, by right. the way. <laughs> you got to go to another town where they also treat their locals like shit, and uh-huh. then they like out of town people. You know what I mean? So I, I like I featured at the Looney Bin. All I used to do all of them. I would, it was, I mean, it was fucking. It was the ult- like when I think of paying my dues, I think of uh, the club you're just at. Uh, That's so funny. <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it was, uh, there was some tough, it's tough. tough. I mean, Oklahoma city is better than the other ones. Uh, there's, <laughs> it gets, there's like four. There's four. Yeah. And they're all in different, it's Oklahoma city, Tulsa, uh, fucking the one that's really tough. What is the one? Uh, what's the other one? Fuck. What's it? Where is it? Not wait. There's Wichita. Wichita. And then the fourth one is the worst, but I can't remember. What I'll, I'll look it up right uh, now. Uh, Fuck, what was it? It was, uh, God, it's like just a shit fuck city. It just, it definitely felt like an old school. <laughs> Oklahoma con- City, Tulsa, Wichita, and, uh, it's a Little Rock. Little Rock. Little Arkansas. Rock. Yeah. That's the tough one? I mean, they're all like, I mean, I don't know. I, I look. It, what would you describe? Because I know we, we always talk about A level clubs, B level clubs, C level clubs. Mm-hmm. Is there D? I mean, I, think, I don't. I don't know. No, I don't think it's D. It's definitely not D. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's like. I mean, it's a look. It's a club. Of course, and Listen, there's people. Come. I'm happy. I can't wait to do a Little yeah. Rock. Yeah. I hope to be there as soon as humanly possible. It does. Like, there's people there, and I. I'm g- grateful I went there. Yeah, like, yeah. I learned a lot. But like, well, first of all, the most depressing part is the condo. Because so I was featuring so, and they still do the condo. I, I was. I was there. Yeah. And you just randomly have to live with someone for like a week. And if you hate them, yeah. well, you I'll always see them. I was it, nervous for a second because it was that same situation. Yeah. But but also like as the headliner, they were very like deferential. Like, where do you want to go? What do you want to well, do? And I was like, well, oh, that's cool. the thing. I never headlined there. Ah, so featuring there was really tough because you were with these washed out headliners, basically you now. And no, I'm joking. <laughs> I, well, I said, I said the thing is, when I was in the lobby area where they have all the, I told you where they have all the famous comedians. Yeah. It was one of those lobbies where I was like, I don't know who They're all nicknamed. Oh, it's, it's, it's white comics with nicknames, yeah. which is like, yeah. Slappy, it's hard happy, for yeah. Slap, yeah. 
It's hard to have a funny comic with a stage name, but yeah. if it's going to happen, they're definitely going to be black. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. They're definitely not <laughs> white. You know what I mean? I think it's very funny. There's some black comedians that are like... Uh, Andre the comic. Yeah. Funny Dan. And but you're like, like <laughs> usually, <laughs> just um, to let you know, this is exactly no, what you're One time help. when I started comedy, I was with oh, that, a bunch of like black friends. I was friends with comics and there was like a black, and we did a prayer circle before the show. And oh, the, wow. pray, the guy goes, the, the guy, it was like me and like four other black comics. You know, I was friends with And the one black comic was like, he was like, God, give us the strength to be ourselves tonight. Just authentic and be ourselves. All right. Big Peanut, you're up first. <laughs> I, Tornado, <laughs> Tornado Levon, you're second. <laughs> I, I was in, when I was in uh, Grand, Grand Rapids, no, not Grand Rapids, uh, Helium, one of the Heliums, uh -huh. and there was a black comic downstairs, and he was, I mean, sold out, packed. Yeah. But at some point, you know, it's, it's the show, it's a show. Yeah. And he, at some point, he's like, Jesus gives us the strength yeah. to do this. Yeah. Now, ladies, who here licks balls? <laughs> who here is licking balls? This is that your mama? Do you lick balls? And you're like, this is wild. I know. This well, is wild. Can you, I just can't even imagine in the middle of my setup. I'm like, but you know what? Jesus yeah. is the way. But that just shows you that, like, black people have a much better relationship with religion a lot of times because it, it's not, like, they're not prude. Like, they can be, like, I've had so many black guys just yeah. talking about just, you know, fucking a girl in the ass with a big cross swinging from there. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like connect with white people. It's like, ooh, you know what I mean? But yeah. black people are like, Jesus gave me the strength to lick pussy. Like, that doesn't, like, uh, they can kind of, you know, combine the two. What are um, your views on black comedians? <laughs> well, I'm not a comedian, so. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, so I was in, so, uh, oh, I, what I want to say is. The black comics with stage names obviously can be great. Which, sure. I mean, you got Earthquake. Oh my God! You gotta, but like I think it's just incredible because I don't dabble in sincerity at mm -hmm. all, or if I yeah. do, it's only for me to have a punchline that insults right, that right, sincerity. Right, 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 if right. you both but, had to have stage names, what would they be? Long setup, Serezi. Okay. <laughs> How about you? I don't know. I mean, I guess um, what's a good stage name for me? What do you think? I uh, I mean it's something it's something loud. Or Jewy, like I, I, if I was being serious, I think it would be like a, like a theater kid, like, like, uh, I'd be like the other fat Jew, the other fat, the other fat Jew. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, who would I? Uh, a theater kid, spotlight, something theatery. Yeah. Something like something with Tappy, like Jamarco, a five, six, seven, Serezi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, like, you're like Italian and Jewish, right? So you sure. maybe do something... Uh, well, I had a sketch series called Matzo Pizza, which is pretty on the nose. Matzo Pizza, that's yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I mean... Uh, what would you be, Russell? Plump and Duncan. <laughs> Plump and Duncan? Yeah, just you like, need both words to be fat? <laughs> Just those, well, you're I, like little, the, I like how those sound together. You know. <laughs> what about this? You're kind of like a little autistic Andrew Rain Manischewitz. Oh, oh that's good. Joke. I can't remember. You, I can't do you, remember. Do you no, think no, me, no. of me as autistic? No, 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 no. I, that was a test. The fact that you were like, well, I don't know. You always, if you just tell someone they're autistic, you see the reaction. If they're like insulted, they're not autistic. I see. Were you insulted? Uh. Not You're on the spectrum. <laughs> I, I, have, I had a voicemail. I had a voicemail because I was calling. I don't think I, you are. I was calling an agency to see if I could take a test to see if I was on the spectrum. Really? But I feel like it was one of those things where I'm like, where I'm trying to find it so I can blame, like, why I'm a yeah. bad boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. yeah, yeah no, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. you're autistic. I think you're just yeah. annoying. I don't think you're <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you set up with a negative thing. I keep on wanting to do something negative and have it go to the theme song. Oh, yeah. You, you, can, you, can, <laughs> you can roast me. I'll get you back. But, but uh, I feel like we've, we've – people throw – around that word like crazy right now yes. if someone's late all the time they're autistic yeah and it's it's hard with all mental illness Wait, it's like, late i feel like autistic people on time but that's what i'm saying like people use it for any oh, characteristic like, they yeah, don't yeah. like they're like well, i think he's a little on the spectrum yeah yeah and it's hard to know because if you don't believe in free will like i don't per se uh -huh. i think it's very easy to be like well yeah everyone's flaws are a disorder in the sense that, like, they can't help it. Of course. Mm -hmm. And then you become, like, no one's accountable for anything. I brought up, I was talking to uh, Isabel Hagen, mm -hmm. and we were talking, and I was just like, like, I was like, well, you know how, like, there's no free will. And she's like, what? And then she, like, she has this quality where she'll, like, if you say something, she'll think it's, uh, she has that kind of anxiety where you're like, 
you'll believe what other people say. Sure, kinda. sure. She's like, there's no free will. And I'm like, I mean, I don't know. That's just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just what I'm saying. But I mean, like, I guess, like, scientifically, there's no free will. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, there's, there's all this... I remember when I was first getting into philosophy, like in college, and it was like in the midst of an existential crisis, yeah. like a sustained one. Yeah. And I remember where I was so susceptible to, I, I remember deeply, like I really wanted to like believe in a God type yeah. figure. And uh, uh, my girlfriend at the time, she would like, sh- I, she would throw me scientists who believed in God. Yeah. Or whatever. And Stephen Hawking used to have a lot of language about God. But it wasn't. It's, but it, it's, it was a it's metaphor. Einstein. He had a it, girlfriend who was Christian yeah, at yeah. the time. It all comes from Spinoza, who was pantheistic, yes. who talked about God. But and it I wasn't, like Spinoza. It wasn't God in the sense that people think. And that, it wasn't it, God, but it was that, still something. Yeah, it was a cohesion to the universe. Um, and Einstein talks about it too, but they were all not really actually. Yeah. Like Sp- Spinoza, Hawking, I mean, Hawking, definitely not. Definitely. But then there was like, it was when I was in college, like uh, uh, Hawking came forward. It was like on my Yahoo News at the time. Yeah. There was like, Hawking says there's no God. And I was yeah. at that place where like, if someone said that, I'd be like, <gasps> as opposed to just like, okay. Well, it's hard one to. One more this way, one more that way. It's Who hard to, knows? Yeah. You can't, it's hard to be like, there is a God and he gave me Lou Gehrig's disease. <laughs> 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 like it's hard to. Uh, There's a cruel. I yeah, wouldn't ask I mean, anyone God. in a wheelchair what their religious beliefs <laughs> are. <laughs> You're like, no, obviously for you, there's no God. But for the sure, rest of sure, us, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for the rest of us, you know, we're kind of grateful about yeah. stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, well, Spinoza said it was free will, which obviously said if you threw a rock in the air, the rock would think it's flying. Mm. And that's like, to me, what free will is. It's an illusion, but it's an illusion you have to, you, it's, it ends up being a semantic argument because you still have to believe in it. But I think it's good to take a, a step back. I think in situations where it is important to take a step back, there's like there's a life, the the illusory life you have where you believe in free will, and then it's important to take a step back and re- at certain points and realize, oh, no one really is making choices, and it allows you to be a more empathetic person. I agree with that. The Republican Party is completely based on the notion of free will to the point of I wrote, got up from my bootstraps and self-made man. And it's like, there's no self-made. Of like, course. Like, everyone's so dependent on their nurturing when they're younger. Sure. And the fact that you don't even, like, put that as a currency. You know what I mean? Like, but like, I worked my ass, like, my ass off. It's like, yeah, but you're, like, mom sat you on your lap and said you could be anything you wanted. That's... That's yeah. not self-made. That's better than growing up with like millions of dollars. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, I I have I my parents had a little had some money. Sure. And definitely. I think about it. I think about it more. You know, there, there's especially like in the online world. There's definitely a lot of like, well, if your parents had money, fuck you. Yeah. 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 And and it's uh, kind of a thing where I I also feel like well, it's not like this helped me in stand up very much. No. Financially, sure, but it's not like my 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 stepdad. New, yeah. you know, the booker of a club, right? And it's definitely not gonna like it. It de- doesn't make you talented or not talented. Just True. like some people, like some people, are like look at the like those comics, like like fucking Julia Louise Drives came for money, but she's also really talented. Like, she went to yeah. the private school, yeah. close to my private school. But yeah. she's like, but like whether you're rich or not does yeah. not define she's whether astounding. you're talented. Yeah, yeah, it does not define whether you're talented or not. Well, that I was, was at least online. We live in a world where like. Talent doesn't seem to matter. I mean, it, yeah, I, especially on like the Twitterverse, there's a lot of like, yeah, is this person talented? Like, no, no one really says, unless it's someone who like has done a bad thing. No one's ever like, they're not talented, right? Yeah, right, exactly. But then, it, but it was a self made thing. I saw this chart that was like, there are no self made billionaires. I was gonna disprove my point a little, but they're like, there are no. Self- and then it had Elon Musk, and it said heiress to the apartheid diamond whatever and we're yeah. like all right that's a good one but then it said <laughs> jeff bezos got three hundred thousand dollars seed money from his parents and i'm like yeah but he took that and turned it into a hundred and seventy five billion dollars that's pretty good there's there, there's yeah. plenty of people that got that loan that did not yes. yeah I, I mean that i feel like the difference between three hundred thousand and a hundred and seventy five billion is yeah. enough, that is literally the equivalent of like my mom lent me 20 and I made fifty million dollars, <laughs> yeah. and people are like, "Oh, it's all rigged. The rich just get richer." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like I would bet good. that over the years, especially if you look at my college and everything, my dad and mom have probably given me that much. What three hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah, like over the trajectory of my yeah. life. And I just went to Europe and got a happy ending massage and spent it on food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got nothing. <laughs> 
I got this podcast. You got a happy ending massage? I did get a happy ending massage. Where? What country? Uh, this was in Amsterdam. But you can just get a. Well, I guess you can get it. Yeah, yeah. I got. I actually did that. I got a. Well, a, a hand job there recently. It's so funny. We're both in yeah, Amsterdam. Yeah, you were a paid one or just a Pay- someone was into your comedy. No, no, I'm not just bragging about it. <laughs> not just like I fingered a girl but under the bleachers. No, we're talking about like. No, I I, I went when I was 21. I desperately, I wanted to be with a sex worker because I was curious. I thought uh-huh. it'd be fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but I was far too scared of STDs. Yeah. Well, that's I, why I got a hand job recently from there. Yeah. But I tell you, it's fucking, uh, it's crazy because first of all, it's illegal, right? What, in Amsterdam? It's legal. prostitution. Yeah. It's legal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Illegal, yeah. Which, uh, the minute something's legal, I'm like, well, I guess it's not wrong. And <laughs> Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's been my morality yeah. this whole time. <laughs> but it is crazy going there, because like, I walk, there's just women in, in behind those windows, mm-hmm. and you just have to- The red light district. Yeah, you just go up to one. You been to Amsterdam? No, no. I didn't want to have sex, though, because I'm like afraid of like, I don't want to, I'm afraid of STDs, you know? But I was like, I'll just get a hand job. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was my thinking. Exactly. And then Adrian Appaluccia was with me, and she was like, but that's such a... I mean, she wasn't with me when I was getting the hand job. <laughs> but she was like, that's such a ripoff. You can just do that yourself. And I'm like... It's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. Isn't there a thing there's a take... Some people, they... They sit on their hand to make it numb, and then it feels like someone else's. Yeah, you're you still know. gonna feel. That I know it sounds like crazy, a, like but life. you're still gonna probably feel a little yeah. lonely yeah. when yeah. you do that. <laughs> I tell you, like, I think one of my things with like sex toys, like, like I had a flashlight in high school, uh-huh. I think, and uh, I mean, I I would put it. This is intense. I would put it between the mattress and the the holder thing, and I would yeah. like fuck, fuck the flashlight doggy style, essentially. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, the, I see. You know, I've. But Does the money. flashlight have an ass? You can get an ass. I got, I got the, the got vagina the, one. The, right, but you, you can get it, an asshole. But can you fuck it? I mean, like, is, there, is, is it possible that the vagina, you're behind the vagina? No, no, there's some. <laughs> okay. There's some. Okay. Yeah. There's all sorts of stuff. I remember when I was in Germany, in the bathroom, they had something called a pocket pussy. And it was just like you fill it with water, and it just—it's essentially just a sleeve. Yeah. What do you yeah. mean in the bathroom? Water. Like in the bathroom, they had vending machines. Like they would give condoms or oh, tampons. Oh, you could and buy. Had like Whenever when someone has like a giant, like like I got a vagina that's robotic, and I can fuck you know it every night. I'm just kind of like talking to women's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, my worry is like the. There, there's like a flashlight where it it does the, the the pumping too. You just like put it on your lap and it oh. essentially blows you or whatever yeah. they call it. Uh-huh. And I'm just like something about it, it's like I worry then I'll just do that for I'll never have sex again. Yeah, I'll just I'll just c- coming will become increasingly just like like the thing I get done in the morning and it'll lose its magic. But it's also like I it, you know I definitely did the after thing a couple of times, but like I do realize too like emotion and sex motion makes sex like what it is like sure not having emotion and sex gives it it's not i don't even know if you f- i feel necessarily yeah. gross. maybe i feel a little gross but it's just mechanical and sad like if no one's crying it's yeah, just exactly. like so how was was it a massage and a hand job or just, just a hand job yeah so you you go in the room and did you pick someone you were i came to? quickly too that's the problem with uh, <laughs> like is there kissing that's the problem or? with like Coming quickly, you end up ripping yourself off because I spent like a hundred feet. I'm like, God damn it! Why? Well, I, I really if, jipped myself. That's why they probably can't like schedule people because they're like, I don't know how long this is yeah, gonna last. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's definitely a time limit. You can't go too long. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So you did you pick so like did you did you go window shopping a bit like this yeah, is well, the one that's, that's the part that's like bad. Sure. But you're like, oh, I can just yeah. point to a woman and get a hand job from them. Did you know? any of them have lines, or they're just there? If they're in the window, they're free. Uh, yeah, there, it was black if there was no line. But it's crazy. It's Amsterdam. So, like, the red light district is not a grimy place. There's families in there. Shit. They have a weird... Like, I left, like, zipping up my pants while, like, a child with a balloon was walking by. And yeah. Family. <laughs> and the balloon was a condom that yeah. he found on the ground. <laughs> but it's, uh... Was there a condom for this? Not for a hand job. Not for a hand For job. blow jobs. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'd rather do a hand job, no condom, than of course. blow job condom. I've never got a blow job with a condom. No. No, yeah. No. I, um, it does not sound... That sounds like I wouldn't... I, I unless you got the hand involved, I wouldn't finish. One time, I got a, a happy ending massage, and I like came really quickly, like in the beginning. It was like sure. happy I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> by the yeah, but go ahead. Sometimes it's prostitution. I get too nervous. <laughs> now, did she know. she didn't wear a glove or anything? It was... No, but I just sat there. I had to sit there on my own cum while I was getting a bad <laughs> massage for like 42 minutes. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's supposed wait, to be like, a happy start. Wait, she did. No, that, she came quickly. Like, uh, oh, oh and then like, she yeah. did the rest of the massage yeah, yeah, while yeah, you. Yeah, oh, yeah. and yeah. she didn't. There was no cleanup. Like, yeah. Oh, exactly. She's um, just like using it as the oil we, to like. There's, <laughs> there's. I can't remember if it's a mutual friend or or I don't want to. But we know. I think we know. But maybe yeah, I say know. the name and address. Uh, no, no, no. There was someone, but maybe there's someone I know. I'll say uh-huh. that. Um, I think that they talked about having a happy ending thing and. The person putting a giant like like you clean me. your bathroom. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> when they when they I couldn't remember when they or... so the 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 one in Amsterdam. I wasn't sure if it was a happy ending massage part. I I, I assumed it was given yeah. the district, but I wa- they brought me in the room and it was just a mattress on the floor. Uh-huh. And again, like I still had this nervous like she was massaging me. I'm naked. She's massaging me and like getting lower and lower to my ass. But I was terrified. Like, what if I turn over and she goes ah. What? Get the fuck out! Like I was scared. Yeah, I, yeah. And so she's just like, eventually she's getting so close to my ass. So I'm like, this has to be. I'm levitating you, you can, off the fucking can, mattress. You can, you can tell they're they're like squeezing her ass and like yeah, yeah. Yeah. you can tell like it's like it's not usually not gonna have that issue. Um, but then she takes like, uh, and I didn't pick this person. It was like a massage part. So it's just like a really sign from Spinoza to hand job really quickly. <laughs> and and it's all part of the universe. And she puts on like a glove that goes all the way to her elbow. Just uh-huh. to show like how how little she wants to do this. Yeah, and the, yeah. the, the lube is like in a big ketchup bottle. Uh-huh. Yeah. And at some point she says, do you want me to take off my shirt? And uh, I'm like, okay. And she just like takes it off. But she does this over me. Like it was so yeah. unappealing. It was so mechanical. No, it's awful. Yeah. It, almost, it almost made me go soft. No, it's awful. Because it's like sex is like, you really do need emotion. Whether you're like, whether you're even like really have feelings for the person, you need emotion on some level. Just hooking up with people—that's why a prostitution's not. It's. I mean, I, I did it, but it's like it, it does. It is like a, like we saw a live sex show in Amsterdam. I saw I, one too. Yeah, yeah. I thought it'd be really fun. It but is it, some sad shit. But in my head, I was imagining like two weird, like two people having an awkward moment and then fucking. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to watch yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's all this stripper mechanical bullshit. Uh, they're they're pumping to the beat. They're pumping to the beat, and so it's not even fucking. It's just gymnastics. Yeah. And he has this dead look on his face, and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. it made me hate like everything. Did he finish or does he just go off? I don't think they the ever finish. Set. Yeah, it was because you know also very... they're doing like eight sets a night. Yeah. So like. Oh. And they're probably some people are injecting things. I like the comedic ones more. Like there was, I think I did where I went on stage. Went she on put stage? a she went a permanent marker in her pussy and like drew. Yeah, like, like this uh, the is Mona also Lisa on my Amsterdam. chest. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh but God. it's so like it's just so like mechanical. Can I? Yeah, I just want to see like two people sitting down having a conversation, and it just <laughs> you want to see, slowly like, a, leads a to three sex. hour show. You want to hear like a really yeah. good two hours and fifty play. minutes is talking. I guess I'm then... like, I think I just want to watch people have sex where they don't realize I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Like this is not they they definitely know people are watching. Yeah. I saw there's this place called The Box here and they do like kind of vaudeville type stuff. It's very sexual though. The show starts at three in the morning. Yeah. And the funniest thing, this guy, I guess his bit is he fists his own ass, but he couldn't do it that night. Oh really? And you saw him like try and then like, you know, shake out his Was he wrist apologizing? A no, no, but it just like it. It was like a singer like cracking on a note, but he couldn't get his hand all the way in his ass. And after the third time he was like you know, pretended like kind of danced it off. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. But he, he failed. He couldn't do it. Oh, my he God. He couldn't do it. Which There's is a- weird because you don't think the asshole is getting tighter in his profession. <laughs> <laughs> you think it would get easier as it goes along. <laughs> Maybe his hand is infected. It's getting swollen yeah. after all these shows. It's like the OJ Simpson trial. Yeah. <laughs> the There's head. like a woman. She made a martini inside of herself and then like someone drank it. Oh. I didn't drink it. I don't. I don't know. What if were I you would. doing comedy on the show? Or were you just were watching? This is the show I did with Jessica Fry, our sketch team member, called Clown Bar, where we oh, did earlier in the night. We right. did like a theater piece. Gotcha. Um. So. So wait. I just want to get this because are you sitting in a chair for this hand job? It's like it. Uh, you are like a bed. Yeah, it's lying on a you're bed. On a, so you're lying on a bed. Yeah. And uh, how long? How quick are we talking? Because you're not hard right away. So she's got to do something. Oh no! I think I, I I think I was just kind of exaggerating. I don't know. It probably took about, but I do get you know like it's like I'm so used to foreplay. So when there's so little yeah. foreplay, I'm like, whoa! Of course, I'm usually used to like you know 45 minutes and then we have sex. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I like to run a couple jokes. Yeah, so I so I was like, I don't know. I come pretty quickly because I'm not. There's no like. <laughs> so I'm like ah. And how much money? It was pretty cheap. I thought it was like seven. It was like fifty bucks. Fifty. 50 euros. 50 euros, so a little more. What's yeah. the conversion rate right now? It's probably like $57, $57 or something, yeah. 
Um, well, I, I, I do. Before we get to your, I want to say I had a, um, I got an, an an email from an angry audience member from this week at the Looney Bin. At the Looney Bin, how'd it go? By the way, uh, it was it was. I have fine. a lot of respect that you're doing it. It's it, it makes you I a better comic. That. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's like I've been doing the road this year. Like ev like it's great. Ten weekends in a row, and it is fucking hard. Well, I see. I see the Looney Bin as a place where, like, especially when you're in New York for a while. It's like taking your astronaut helmet off in space. You're like, oh, we're outside the bubble. Yeah. Oh, a lot of these jokes don't work. Yeah. But that's why. Listen, I came up at I came up at LOL Comedy Club. Yeah. So which yeah. I've I and mean, I've had I've had a you comedian were born once in he, the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once a comedian once a comedian told me he's like, don't tell people you worked at club, and I'm like, man, that's why I can do this. Yes. Because that's tourists. It's tourists and it's rowdy. And yeah, you can go super blue and be an idiot and kill. Yeah. But you can figure out your version of killing with people from different parts of the world. That's smart. Right. And, and people, I mean, look, I, I love clean comics, but just almost, I guess, counterpoint. It's like, you learn that, well, blue will save you in some rooms where you have of nothing course. else in common. And that's like an important thing to have. But, but like so much of like, when you go to the loony bin, you go, Oh, I didn't realize this joke is based on a shared value system. Of course. And, it's okay for a joke to be based on a shared value system. What's not good is that you're so entrenched in the bubble you don't realize it is. So the loony bin allows you to kind of be like, okay, that joke is a joke that's only going to work in a coastal you know, yeah. place. And that's fine. I, I, I'm fine with that. I, I honestly think if you only do jokes that work at the loony bin, sure, it's not going to be that great. But it's important to at least know the difference and have most of your stuff be stuff that can work and it's Anywhere. a good, it's pushy, like, where I have some political bits or, you know, about things uh, that are more hot button. It's like, can I work in a concert? Is the joke funny enough that everyone in this room disagrees with me? Yeah. Like. Which uh, it should be. Like, it, it, those are the best jokes. Like. Yeah. And you figure out, and you figure out how to, like, I remember Jim Jeffries, he, he's famous for his, like, gun control bit or whatever. And he said he would run it in all these conservative places and that helped him understand what are all the counter arguments. Yes. And that's how he made the joke kind of yes. – if you can have a joke that has good logic and is funny, it's great. Yes, and it's like – to me, the jokes – like that are the best are the jokes where you can, you bring up an issue that's divisive, but the punchline is something where you're like, oh, we're all like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like something where like uh, where you're. To, I mean, I think that's almost all good art where like you have these ideals, but your emotions and mm -hmm. your behavior contradict your ideals. You know, yeah. Which is why comedy's become so bad lately. Is that people are on stage just kind of saying their virtuous ideas but that's not funny yeah that's yeah. not the fallibility yeah. of being human you're you're just right it's I not think funny any, any yeah. kind of comedy that makes i mean maybe this is too hard to rule but i am of the mindset if any of the comedy is to make you look good as the comedian that's yeah. bad comedy that's not yeah. what comedy yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's like and then it gets to the point where like People are doing empowering comedy. I'm like that's yeah. not what comedy is about. Mm -hmm, that yeah. you sh it, to the point where people think it's like uh, I saw Jessica Kirshen, one of the best. I saw a tweet today. Someone was angry that she was fat shaming herself. Yes, yeah. in a joke. I saw that. Tweet. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, and you shared that clip with me. You thought it was such a funny. Oh, such a funny. And it's like you don't clip. know what comedy is. You don't understand that. Like, it, and and the really pure comedy is. I mean, it, it sounds so like preachy or stupid but but it's it's, it's weird because like i hate virtuous comedy but i'm actually very virtuous about what i think comedy should be because i actually do think in a corny way it does unite people in the sense that it transcends these trivial differences sure and goes oh yeah you're right i do i think i do have these hypocritical feelings like everyone it, yes. it brings people together yeah. you know? but i think the issue like like joe rogan is such a perfect example where it's like Part of the problem is, Joe Rogan, go talk crazy shit all yeah. you want. Talk your conspiracy theories. Who gives a fuck? But because of the internet and social media and podcasts, you start to have this gigantic following. And a huge chunk of them are some of the biggest fucking idiots in the world. And yeah. they start taking your comedy or your just like random musings. And they start like people build political platforms off of it. It's, it's like comedy... 
that, that that's the problem that you have a bunch of people taking this as the word of God or they take it as hate speech or encouragement for their own hateful shit. Like yeah. Jesselnik, who I love, has fans that I'm sure are fucking monstrous people. And yeah, they but think- you can't. You can't. Yeah, and I think liberals, which I am one, um, reluctantly. I think liberals. <laughs> uh, I think they fall into a problem a lot more than the right sometimes, where they think. If someone misinterprets art, it's the fault of the artist. Yes. And, and that's yeah. like a huge problem. Like, cause they're like, well, you shouldn't say this. It could be taken the wrong way. To the point where a lot of times they'll deliberately take something the wrong way. Of course. They'll yeah. be like, what did you mean by that? Even though you know. Yeah. Like, uh, like I remember someone tweeted, I think when that fly... Uh-huh. Fell on Mike uh, Pence's head. Yeah. Someone was like his one black friend or something. And then someone was messaging, like they, it was like a whole attack. I don't forget who it was, but they were like, "Do you think black people are the same as flies?" And it's like, you know, she doesn't think that. Yeah. Like you know that she's not like ah, finally a joke. Where can I express my view yeah. that black people are equivalent <laughs> to yeah. flies? It's like so people will deliberately misunderstand something to get offended but yeah i don't like i think it's not up to the i think it's dangerous to like because then what happens is you start thinking well if this art can be misinterpreted misinterpreted i can now make it really overt i have to make it overt and not be misinterpreted and that's well, not that, fun that's yeah. not fun it's not subtle which is real uh, which is really yeah. an enemy of art which is yeah. not subtlety and and wokeness very much is enemy of art because wokeness is basically saying I'm so outraged, I'm going to beat you over the head with this, which is really the enemy of art, because art needs to be yeah. subtle. Art I can't- the problem is with the word woke, I just feel like it's it's come to mean, I try to avoid even saying the word at this yeah, point, no, because, uh, because yeah. then all of a sudden you sound like Bill Maher. That's how yeah, woke Bill you Maher's- are, you're offended by me saying woke, that's how much... <laughs> No, well, but well, well, a, Bill, Bill Maher's new special is called Hashtag Adulting. adulting. Yeah. Someone kill me. Someone um, fucking put a bullet in my... Yeah, what? but there is this thing where it's like... Uh, we were just talking about this before. The, the thing of the confusion of agreeing and, and people just interpreting that as, oh, because yeah. I, I agree... It's funny. Yeah. And like, like instead of like, there's not a physical reaction of laughter happening. Yeah. It is literally being like, mm-hmm. it's shared, like, it shared value yes. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it, it's, it's the agree is the laughter. To the point, I'm, I mean, like, I'm not the one who said this, but it's a good, it's a, it's a very good point. Like, comedy shouldn't be you up there going, racism is bad. Comedy should you be up there going, we're all a little racist and here's how I'm racist. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what comedy should be. When you're up there just being like, raising that, it's like, yeah, we all agree with that, but it's just not funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you're right, it's not funny. Like, comedy is about being aware of human fallibility, not, like, virtuousness, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that shit kind of, like, and that's why so much comedy is, is, is bad. Like, Joe List had a special came out. He has a great, uh, just a perfect, like, joke in the beginning, which is what I think is a kind of ideal joke where he's like, Talk about how with the mask issue, he agrees with whoever he's around. You know, like so if he's <laughs> yeah. around people or and who are like uh, uh, wearing masks, he's like, man, I saw this alt right Nazi uh-huh. uh, not wearing a mask on the street. And then if he's around people without masks, he's like, I saw this lib fucking cuck wearing a mask. You know, and it's like I just agree with whatever people are around. I, I could not have me- been happier when the airplanes took masks but, away. And it, like on Twitter, it was like that was not the view. Yeah, to I know. Tell. Yeah. But that to me, that's like the perfect joke. Just admitting your own. Of course. And, and, and by the way, that's the kind of joke that would work anywhere. Because like yeah. everyone, yeah. and that is the kind of joke that does kind of like in a way, does bring people together by being like, okay, yeah, maybe I voted for Trump, maybe I voted for this, but we all are aware of universal feelings of hypocrisy and cowardliness, and, and those are the jokes that are for sure. important, you know? Well, I want to, yeah. because uh, I do want to hear a little about Kentucky, because I don't know any, but I just want to read this. So I got this. This was the this was the night that I did the show. So there's an early show. Mm-hmm. Older couple in the front row. Man did not laugh a single time. And I tried talking to them. I tried talking to them. And at some point, they said they have, they have kids. And I was like, oh, I'll stay in together for the kids. And then I said, how old are the kids? And she was like, she said, she said to him, don't tell them. Mm-hmm. And then I, oh. and I, I was not doing well at this point. And yeah. I, it was, I was just like, I was like, oh, is that because the kids are old or, or something? And, and, and then I made some, I joked for like maybe 10 more seconds. I'm not like a, I wasn't driving them into the ground or anything. That's not really what I do. But then I got this 
email. Fuck, fuck. Here it is. Uh, so she wrote me from the email on my website. And normally when I get these emails from my website, I get excited because I rarely they come in and they're usually like a booking of, yeah, of some yeah, yeah. offer. Um, subject stand up. I was so looking forward to a night out. I live for being able to laugh. I have st- <laughs> <laughs> right away. I'm like, what a stupid oh, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I have struggled with quote unquote things in life. Laughing is all caps. So important to me. Made the big mistake with agreeing to a front row seat. Oh. Was made fun of and sent into a downward spiral. <laughs> now, again, you got to understand. Like, downward spiral. You're not Top Gun, bitch. <laughs> and and I, wasn't, I wasn't like, you fuck, you suck. No, I didn't go no, Kramer no. on no, these, yeah, yeah. these people. Uh, if I read this written by anyone else, I'd say you're being a big pussy crybaby and to get over it. It's embarrassing. <laughs> hey, she's well, just a little, little bit of self awareness. If I read what I'm saying to you right now, no, I'd be like, this I person would. is the worst. This person like, is a lunatic. I'm stop. But I'm not someone else. It's if a, I was self aware, <laughs> but you know what? I'm not self aware. Here's the best. So she says, it's embarrassing to say I can't. I guess. I get Will Smith a little more now <laughs> oh! after being very critical about him. Oh, I'm sure she was. Oh my God. That's wow. So it's, it's also just very funny. It's like you, she maybe criticized Will Smith online, probably because she's more racist. But what did than, you say? I don't even understand what you say. You just asked them questions or you just like made fun of them for not laughing. I made fun of, like I talked to them. I, I joked about them being old and I think I used like an old line of like, congrats on surviving the 1918. Flu. Yeah. Yeah. An old yeah. joke that they were frankly too young for the joke to really work. Right. Right, right, and that was it. That was it. Uh, that was it. Yeah, it's so. Yeah, it's so bizarre. I mean, that's the kind of person who would not have enjoyed anything. I don't. It's weird. It's not weird that people don't like comedy. It's weird that they think they're gonna like. Well, it. it's weird because <laughs> she lives for humor. She yeah. said she, she lives, lives she for lives to laugh. She lives to laugh. The that's question is, like, what makes thing. her laugh yeah. so? Like, what makes her really laugh? Yeah. Or maybe she does. I would bet that she doesn't like to laugh. She likes to go like. I mean, it's just the fact that she thinks it's unique of her to even mention <laughs> that she likes laughing. I, like, I'm yeah. the kind of person who really likes happiness, and I like joy, and that makes me interesting, that uh, I yeah. like joy. And, and, I also suffer, like, and I've, had, and I've, I've suffered had through things. things. I've had things. I, and things. Unlike a lot of people, I also I've had like some times that were not things. filled with joy. I also like shelter and drinking water. These are the things that are interesting <laughs> about me. <laughs> I mean, she just seems like, it seems like you should have gone on harder. That would be her. like a restaurant. Like, you'd be like, I love food. Yeah. yeah. I eat like three times a day. Yeah. But it is funny that at the end of that, she's just like, I am now pro assault. <laughs> 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 I am now, it is amazing that she goes from going like, if I read this from someone else, I'd get over it. But I'm not. I am pro uh, assaulting someone on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you grew up in Kentucky. Yes. What's the Jewish any Jews there? Were you the only one? No, I mean we're a scattered tribe. We're uh, we're, we're we fled the Holocaust. We couldn't be picky, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can get Kentucky on the visa. You can't be like, I'll stay here in Auschwitz, you know. Sure, we sure. got um, we got uh, I love some bit Auschwitz or Kentucky. Fuck, fuck yeah, fuck. I know. I was just totally doing my bit, but trying but, to make it uh, conversational. Yeah. Um, but it's hard not because that's also my opinion. You know, you never have that where you're like, I don't want to run a bit. But that joke is my I'll opinion. I'll slide into it with yeah. no shame. Yeah, yeah, we all know. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I was in Oklahoma City, and that's what some of these—I mean—talk about like not I think being. Sometimes they're like, "Hey, how's it going?" And you respond with your five minutes you're working on for late night. <laughs> <laughs> how's it going? I'll tell you how's well, it going. Social distancing is good for Italians. <laughs> how's it going? I went to college for musical theater. Um, but th- that's one of the things about doing some of these like loony bids. No Jews. No yeah, Jews there. Maybe on the lineup with yeah. me. No, but. that's someone there. Was the one time I don't. I haven't experienced a lot of anti-Semitism in my life, but like that was the one place where someone was like, "Well, you're gonna Jew me out of that for like I'm selling a shirt or something." Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. I like I had a show recently where I said something like, "Is what's what's fun to do in Batavia?" I was near Chicago, yeah. and someone said like, "Temple, like go to Temple or yeah. something," and I was that I was like, "Okay." Or, or I did a joke of said, I'm Jewish. I said, I'm Jewish, and people laughed. And I was like, oh, was that obvious? And a woman in the front row at the cellar, a McDougal went, 
Yeah. <laughs> oh tap her my nose. God. And I was like, did you just tap your nose? But maybe they, that thing, they might have been Jewish. That's the thing about Jews. We don't all look Jews. So, like, I'll walk down the street and say awful things. And if you didn't know I was Jewish, you'd be like, man, anti Semitism is coming back. Because I'll just be up there just like, fucking, I hate Jews. They're the fucking worst. Sure, you know sure. I mean? like, uh, the Hasids must stop you, though. Yeah, they stopped me, but like. You look I'm like just, you just left. If you like. Yeah, exactly. But I'm, I'm saying, like, if you. No one, you don't know enough about Jews to know to have Judar. Sure, you might be like, "Wow, that guy was really anti-Semitic." You know what I mean? I actually truly believe me being Jewish is the only thing keeping me from anti-Semitism. I honestly think <laughs> that. Like, I I did a show last night for Jews, and they're just the worst. They're the worst crowds. They're just entitled. Rich, Russell, Jew. I have no it. opinion. Yeah. Russell. <laughs> But anyway, uh, but wait, what was it a temple show? Oh, sorry. No, but it was a bunch of Orthodox Jews at a uh, West Side Comedy well, yeah. Club, well, but you, they if, just suck. If you go to a, a group of fucking, you know, priests or nuns, I'm sure it'd be terrible too. The, yeah, anything yeah, super yeah, religious yeah, is going to be a rough Any time. homogeny is always yes. bad. My yes. favorite, I might have talked about it before, but I was at LOL, and sometimes we get these groups of Hasids coming in, and usually just the men. Mm-hmm. And I, it was early, and I said it was like a one a.m. show, and I was like, "Do you guys smoke pot?" And and the city stood up and said, "No, but we'll sell it." And I was like, <laughs> "Jesus Christ, man! You can't say that." I know. You know, Hitler. But they like, don't mind. They don't mind. Like, like they don't mind the jokes. I know. Hitler like saw when he like had his like I want to kill. Him. He saw a Hasid walking down the street, and to be fair, they do kind of look like they're up to no good. They're like in a rush. I mean, they're just in a rush to go to sit a guy, but he just saw it like, and he's like, ah, they own the world, and then he wanted to kill all of them. And it's like, yeah, you should have just stuck with Hasid. Everyone would be fine. Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus. Um, good, good, good. Uh, just a joke. Just a joke, everyone. It's going to be spliced. They could also kill. Con- they could also kill reform Jews. Uh, just not conservative. <laughs> but were you were you in a very Jewish community? Like like yeah, I was friends with a lot of, actually the like Hasidic Jews I was friends with. Um, uh-huh. There's there's a Lubavitcher community uh, in Louisville that uh, I liked a lot. And what uh, does that mean? It's a type of Hasid who's like kind of converted more. Um, there's, so the most Hasids are kind of in their own little world and the Lubavitchers are kind of do more outreach to other Jews. So they're more like they try to kind of it's all they kind of try to like get other Jews more religious. Because I have a question because my girlfriend grew up in a Chabad community and you both have a lisp. Is that mm-hmm. a Jewish thing? Do Jews have lists more often? No, well, I didn't grow up in a Chabad community. But you grew up with Jews. I'm just wondering if like Jews, Jews have lisps. Hmm, that's a good point. <laughs> Let me think. Me... Her. <laughs> That's my sample size. <laughs> that might be it. I'm trying to think of other Jews with lists. I mean, like... Do you like, was do you Matt, like well, the list? Like, comedically, t- it's... it's Comedy is one of those... It's wonderful in a certain sense where, like, anything different about you can be funny. I don't know, because my list is, like... I've tried to do jokes on stage about it, but I, I don't know. I don't... Ashton th- uh, Womack has some great jokes about his lisp yeah i have a couple but the problem is like i don't i mean maybe i'm wrong but i don't think my lisp is that like big what about the h's you have you say h? h's in a weird way h you say say human human uh now yeah. you fixed it but but you have a lot of like human like really? you skip the h well you know what i do do i over i have a weird impediment i overemphasize t i go manhattan mm-hmm. you know but i i've done choices about my list some of them work but i i, I guess i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm just Maybe I'm wrong about it. It might not be bad enough. Like I don't know. I, I, don't, realize- I don't think just like I don't think it's as noticeable as like I don't think it wouldn't be like oh he needs to comment on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, there is that we're fine line there, of like know. that's what I'm saying. It, and I don't mind doing jokes about my list, but when I've done them, it, it, they don't always get last because I feel like the audience isn't always thinking about that off the top of their head. Sure, mm. I realized at a certain point I was like I can't do tall jokes. Yeah, I'm tall. Yeah, I have some things that uh, about life, but I'm six foot four. It's not enough to be like right. right. Luke right. Moniz yeah, yeah, yeah. is tall enough to do a tall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe I sound like fucking Daffy Duck or whatever I'm saying. <laughs> I thought like Daffy Duck was a very respected comedian. Um. <laughs> um, so, so you you grew up in this in Kentucky. Do you, did you like Kentucky? Your family's still there. Um, yeah, no, they moved. Uh, they moved to Tacoma, Washington. Uh, oh, Tacoma! I've done. Yeah. I did Tacoma Comedy Club. So I yeah, that. Tacoma's great. Uh, but what was the question? Sorry, do you, I, did you so like funny Kentucky? They have questions written down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's, it says it says just you know it says sober, 
Sister Derm, <laughs> dermatology, Kentucky, third grade teacher, Fringe Festival, cat. It's just so, okay. So hand wait, jobs. And then it says three times to make sure I hit that. So wait, what was the question? It was. Uh, <laughs> Did, uh, downsides about Kentucky, growing up in Kentucky. Downside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I like Louisville. Um, Louisville is like a cool town. It's not, it's not like Kentucky is like, like Louisville snobbish towards Kentucky the way other people are snobbish towards Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Louisville is pretty, I actually really love Louisville. I That was a tough thing about like. I was like, I was always like, should I make jokes about being, you know, growing up in Kentucky? But, but a lot of it kind of, um, I think it's funny. I, know, I know you're a comedian because it's like, what did you think of this? And you're like, well, I've tried jokes about it before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just sometimes will feed into a stereotype that's not accurate. Sure. Which is that like Louisville, I mean, it has like a liberal mayor. It's like a liberal town. Mm. And that, you know, was people from the north, they think the south is all like, you know, homogeneously the South. Sure. But the truth is, like, it's, it, it, the, the cities are, are can be liberal. I mean, I'm not saying they're super liberal, but, like, it wasn't, like, a redneck town. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. I mean, Hunter S. Thompson's from there. He's not exactly, like, sure. you know, oh, that famous Muhammad Ali's from there. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, like it's not, like, you know. Um, so I liked it a lot, actually. I don't know what the downside was. I mean, uh, I love living there. Um I mean, there wasn't a lot of Jews. We kept kosher, which was annoying because there's no like kosher restaurants. And were they were the kosher? Like, were your parents? Did they believe in all the things? Yeah, though we would eat out. Actually, you just wouldn't eat meat out. Yeah, I mean, if we couldn't eat out, we couldn't eat anywhere, you know. But we didn't eat meat out, so I hated. We'd go to Chinese restaurants, which Chinese restaurants or Asian restaurants without meat, I think, are just like. I mean, now they're better. They have like better yeah, tofu things. can be good. I know, but back in the day, it was just so yeah, depressing no. going to like we'd go to like a Thai place without meat. I don't know. I just find it. And so... you can't eat any of it because you can't eat the meat. You're not allowed to eat any of the meat. No, because it's not kosher. It's not kosher prepared. It's not, like it's not prepared with you have. Where to... they pet the cow before they kill it. Yeah, they pet the cow. They negotiate with the cow. They <laughs> they say, you know, are you sad? Do you want another? Day? No, they use a. It's called a shahita knife. It's a knife that's very sharp that they slit the throat with. I do admire that. I got to I mean. I, I think we should all be vegan morally, ethically. Yeah, yeah. But if sure. you're going to kill, I do think it's nice to put a little bit of thought into well, it. Well, that's that's kind of the good thing and the bad thing about religion. It was humane at the time, but it's not the easiest way to kill an animal now. Like, mm. you're still slitting an animal throat. Yeah. It was more humane than what everyone else did back then, where they just fucking, like, punched the cow till he died. But, like... <laughs> oh. But, like, now, I mean, like, A, it's more humane just not to kill an animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And B, it's like a fucking, you know, the No Country for All Men gun. Is yeah, I've seen that. Fucking, yeah. Uh, but I, I always remember where there was a guy, he was in the, it's called Anonymous for the Voiceless, and he's wearing the Guy Fox mask. He's holding a TV in the subway, and it shows, like, something like that, but they keep missing the cow, or they keep missing the yeah. cow's head. Yeah. Or then there was the image that I'll never forget. It was, like, the cutest chicks you've ever seen on a on a conveyor belt into just shredding. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. It's it it was horrible. And the guy saw me like staring at the screen and he was Do like, I, I got him. I guess I don't um I'm trying to think. Do I ever eat those chicks? What would that be? That, isn't that kind of just chicken fingers? Well, shit? whenever you have chicken nuggets, whenever you have but I anything, never have chicken nuggets. Sure. So am I on the good? Am I on the clear? Yeah, yeah, you're you're all good. I don't think I ever eat chicks. Yeah. I mean I'll eat, you know. They just actually worse. I eat someone that's been suffering a slaughterhouse for like much longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something with a with a family and children. Yeah, but you didn't. You kept eating. You didn't stop. You didn't. Did you even stop for day. one day? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I, I, are you not vegan? So it's not like it didn't. No. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I just like, I admired from afar. You, uh, you, uh, did you want and credit? I, I you wanted credit more. for stopping and I did, watching. I did not want any credit okay, at all. Okay. I just I just think I'm, I'm better because I realize I'm bad. Yeah. Okay. Slightly better. Well, I mean, it is yeah. true. I mean, it is like it is definitely wrong to eat animals. Definitely. When you don't have to. When you don't have to. But the problem is it's really hard these days to be, like, moral and not want to be inconvenienced at all, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, so, like, my thing with meat is, like, and this is, I mean, this is really, I'm like, I know it's wrong, but it it is easier to be healthy eating meat if you don't cook a lot. Like, Mm. chicken is fairly healthy. Sure. You know what I mean? That's protein. So, like, I just find it to be, in like, fish, definitely. But I would eat fish no matter what. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I told someone, I was like, well, fish suffer less. And they were like, do they? Or is that just the propaganda you've been fed by big fish? <laughs> um, no, I mean, 
fish suffer less because they're like not. I mean, do they do they look like they have as many feelings as cows? But sometimes you see these. Sometimes you see <laughs> their these, eyes aren't even real. <laughs> they don't. Well, they don't close. Yeah, but if you if you saw a human being, if you saw Stephen Hawking, you might be like, does he feel? Sure. And it's like, well, oh, he does. Wow. I, I I used to have a bit about this. Like it's like fish. You don't feel bad for fish because they don't have eyebrows, so they don't look sad when they're dying. <laughs> they look mentally handicapped no matter what. <laughs> I, I have that thought. You'll see a fish in a tank, and they say, like, well, a fish has a two-second memory. So every time he turns, he goes, oh, look at this new place. Yeah. But what if they don't? And they're just like, please, let yeah. me out. Well, that's kind of scary. because that so means, bored. That means they come to, and they're get they're dying, and they're like, where am I? Because <laughs> they just <laughs> forgot. <laughs> and then they keep on forgetting. Like, ah! Ah! <laughs> Every two seconds. Every oh, two no. seconds. <laughs> I'm, I'm on a boat. I just think there's a certain thing like since I could never, I don't think I could kill an animal mm -hmm. yeah. or like, you know, do the, the real thing. I had a voice teacher uh, who grew up in Greece and her husband, at least in whatever little town, you were given a piglet when you were when you were born or whatever. And you grew up with that pig. And their version of like becoming the man is when you're 15 or 16, the pig was fully grown and you had to kill Pigs live that old, your, huh? Your pig. Yeah, maybe, maybe it could have been a little bit younger. But, like, it was part of the, like, you killed the pig that you grew up with. And I'm mm. like, I wouldn't. I That's me leaving the community. I don't think I could. Yeah. I don't think I could. Yeah, could that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's tough. When did you stop being kosher? Because I want to get Tova. I want to I wanna give her bacon so badly. Oh, really? I got her to have an oyster. Good. Which she did that not so like. sexually. It's really weird. <laughs> You're like, uh, whatever it I takes. I want to give her bacon if, so if badly. She... <laughs> do you eat bacon? Uh, I've had it, but I don't like it. What do you like that you couldn't have when you were kosher? What I mean, you... I love shrimp. I wanted to get shrimp. I feel like Jews really fucked up on the no seafood bullshit. Or not the no seafood, but no shrimp. And why was it at the time? Was it because it was like they'd get sick because of it? So they were yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's all no it's more. all like sanitary things. I mean, like I mean, shrimp do like they are just like you know fucking little fucking bugs eating you know shit mm -hmm. off the ocean floor. But like, yeah, well, I think it was sanitary. But like, um, you know, I mean, shrimp is the one I love the most. I'd say I'm not really into lobster. I mean, I'll eat a lobster roll. I don't, I've never, I guess because I was younger, I never got into op breaking shells and shit, and now I just. Lobster's just, a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. I don't like lobster. You got to be like, my mom, like, she'll, she'll, my mom's the one where I'll finish the lobster, she'll be like, are you done with that? And then suck out. Sucks out the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. too much, like, it's, yeah, it's, it's too, a lot of work. It's a lot of work for something that's not that good. Yeah. You know, you're just it's using just it as butter. a vessel for butter. Yeah, you're just like it, that's the texture right. You know, can be good. The texture, like I don't it's mind it, but it's a lot. I think it's too much work. That's for, true for, for a lot of things, like uh, snails. Yeah, snails. snails. Yeah, escargot. Just, just what's this? What's it? Garlic and butter. Yeah, just escargot. Garlic. Escargot. You could literally just do that without snails. Yeah. It'd be just as good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the garlic and the butter are always doing the heavy lifting on that. Yeah. Um, you is is it? You do have a sister that's a a fraternal twin. Yes. Uh, are you guys close? Yeah. I mean, I'm close to her. I'm close to all my siblings. I don't know if I'm necessarily closer to her. Maybe growing up I was, but, you know, genetically, it's interesting for Turtle Twins. We're not, I'm genetically uh, as close, si similar to her as I am my other siblings, you know? That's true. I didn't think uh, of it like but that. But we obviously but had the same, the same, grade the same and stuff, age yeah. and stuff. And no, we're close. I'm close to all my siblings. If anything, I think I talk to her the least. How many siblings do you have? I have an older brother, an older sister, and then my twin sister. And do they anything in the arts? Or are you the, the artist of the family? I'm the artist of the family, yeah. Uh, my older sister's a pilot. So wow. she has a cool job. That's cool. Yeah. Um, if I had a pilot, I, you know, you have a good bit about turbulence. I, I had a flight yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're hour and a half, hour and a half of like straight turbulence. Oh, really? Yeah, and so thank God after 15 minutes, I hate how like you'll have the turbulence and then when it's over, the pilot comes on and goes like, uh, we had a couple bumps back there, but now we're smooth. I'm like, I know we're smooth now. Yeah, I, know. I could have used a word of reassurance yeah. during the I turbulence. Know. They, I, I really think if pilots like did more of that, it would make it so much better. If they would just yeah. be like, like there's going to be turbulence, it's going to be fine. But here's why they don't, I think, because I think if they went on during the turbulence, it would be like this. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to be... We're, uh, fuck, fuck. Uh, we're going to be fine. And that's that's my theory that, of why they don't. I don't they think don't. that they're doing that. Well, they that. could also just not do that. <laughs> yeah. I always look at my thing now to calm my nerves because I have a lot of anxiety about yeah. flying. Which, I mean, you do too, I imagine, unless it's all just a bit. I get no, anxious. No, of course not. Terribly. I yeah. saw the video of the, China pl the plane in China going down. 
No, uh, of course. Yeah, no, I'm terrified of flying. But I always, to calm my nerves, I look at the uh, flight attendants. Yes, me too. Yeah. And if they're like casually like on their phone, I'm like, oh, they've been through this well, I had and lived to times. tell the tale. I had a bit about this once because I did that. And right on I did that, the flight attendant did the sign of the cross. <gasps> oh, like, oh, no. no. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Um, it would be funny if you're a pilot, just as a funny prank, just to go on the intercom once and just be like, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, just like some <laughs> prank. <laughs> People would scream and cry. It would be the horrifying. I know. <laughs> it's really, I got to tell you, I, I'm like, I think of a couple, we spend so much of our life on airplanes. Yeah. And there's the trope of like, no one wants to hear any more airplane material, but it's like, I'm like, well, Sorry. This is twenty percent of my life now. Also, it's, I mean, it's not true. I mean, I think it's it's just you just have like, to come with a good take. Yeah, there's no there's yeah. no hack topic, just hack execution. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I feel like I yeah, my special has that turbulence bit, but like to me, it's like yeah, it's not like why well, is tuna fish sandwiches? Yeah. yeah so yeah. <laughs> you know, it's more about like existential fears and why people are afraid of other things. So it's like sure, it's always like you can always do it a different way. Yeah, but it's just, it's just, it's like everything else. It's like if everyone talks about it, sometimes the angle's been done. If you hadn't told me you did that cross bit, I could see me coming up with something similar right, based right. on what I just said. Well, and then it's like, oh, yeah, okay. there's some, but like the jokes that are really the most, I don't know, there's jokes that are the most important. Like I have a joke on dating apps, and I know it's like, and I do it on my special, I'm like, I know it's not like the most original thing. And dating, my, my, even my bit is not even that original, but it's very true for me. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm like, oh, well, this joke is yeah. very true for me. And yeah. sometimes you almost have to think about your own, take away other comics, just think about your own yeah, yeah, yeah. your own thing. Especially you're doing it's just so much comedy these days at a certain point. It's like everyone's putting out albums now. It's yeah. Like everyone's, you know. I mean, you, sometimes you, instead of looking at everyone else, you got to look at just, oh, what do you want to say on stage? And what's that, you know? Yeah. And like... If that's true to you, and you know, because to me the, the the jokes that are the most important, and the hardest part about this is doing jokes you actually care about, because mm-hmm. that's the ones that will really do the best. If you can show the audience you actually care about something, they'll go they'll go on the ride with you. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So, like to me, that matters more than sometimes than like whether it's original or not. You know, your 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 twin is a dermatologist. Is that true? No, no, that's a joke. Oh, that's a joke. That's a joke. Yeah, I know. That's good. That's good to know because I was about. She to hates ask. that joke because it's not true. Yeah. 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 Do is your family generally cool? You talk about your mom a bunch. Do they do they like all the stuff? Do they ever go? Please there's don't some, say that. They're supportive. My mom doesn't like when I curse and stuff. Really? Which is unfortunate because I refer to her pussy in this latest special, <laughs> which I just think is so funny. She's told me she doesn't like oh. me using dirty language this whole time, and I'm literally now going the other way. <laughs> I uh, I mean, I, I mentioned you in my act, but it's not true. I use your name for one joke. Yeah. The der- yeah, the dermatologist. What about my friend who's cheating on his wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dermatologist thing is definitely, you know, I don't I don't mind, like, um, something not being true. For me, it's more. Well, we had Alex Edelman, and he pretended he had an identical twin, and it was just a friend of his who kind of looks like him. Oh, he does that bit on, like, yeah. late night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? I was like, and yeah. when he told me that, I was like, I've been feeling bad because, like, I exaggerate how many times my dad's been divorced. He yeah. had long-term relationships. But then when he told me that, I was like, oh, cool. Whatever. I don't know. No, I feel like that's there's a, little, a, there's a, a middle, middle ground. Like, I feel like if you're, like, there's a middle ground. That's, like, like, his, that's like As his. an audience thing member, I feel like if you find out, like, something that you, a comic's built a big thing around, and then you feel like that's not, not true later on, there's a weird. I think, that, I think the truth, there needs to be a truth in the beginning. Yeah. That's what I think. I yeah, think, yeah. like, like the dermatologist thing is not true, but that's also, like, a flip at the end of a bit that is true. If my dad hadn't been divorced twice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. four would be bad. But if he is still married, then that's a full lie. Yeah, no, no, no. I feel like also there's just, I, yeah, it just, it, it, it's a case-by-case thing. There's not a strict Alex said on. he has twins write him, though, and be like, hey, this is so funny as as a member of the twin community. That's just, cr- I mean, I don't know. I'm, it's a funny joke you have, but that's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, no one... No one will know these things. That's there's true. so few people who will ever, and I'm not speaking out of turn. He said it on the podcast, but it's no one. No one will ever know. Well, and I, mean, I guess we that all reminder. Know right it's like, now. <laughs> or, like, <laughs> or anyone like, who asked about that joke. But like, who cares about? <laughs> yeah, me? I've never. If I ever see an Alex Edelman show, I'm going to get a comp. You know, it's well, like it, I'm not the people. It makes me wonder: Did he really do this uh, white supremacist uh, <laughs> thing in that new show? <laughs> but that's the thing with the one man shows, where like it leans on the context of there's more truth. Like, yeah. that's part of the one-man thing. Yeah. And then, like, 
I, I could see like, you know, who's that guy? Oprah, the Oprah, the author who got uh, caught lying uh, about his oh, a million yeah. little pieces. A million little yeah, pieces. Yeah. What's his name? I could I see one man shows like like all of a sudden like Nanette. You find out that <laughs> she's not <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Russell, um, <laughs> sure. I think I'm talking to Merv Griffin here. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, if she was a gay or something, or like, that'd be wild. That'd yeah. be wild. Or, yeah. uh, or if she's never been raped. Well, didn't she talk about that the whole time? She was, I think, assaulted. Yeah, yeah. she had assaulted them. These days, that's like your credit. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, oh god, there's something I'd like to talk about, but I can't. Sadly, what? I just get nervous. There, there is. Oh boy. Oh, but wait. Well, I want to go back to the truth thing. We can cut everything out. Fuck you. <laughs> Cutting shit stuff out sucks. What were you saying? The true, uh, the true thing. I do think. I think the be- there should be a sh- kernel of truth somewhere in it. Yeah. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't think what Alex Edelman. I actually think at the end of the day, it's not whether it's true or not. It's whether it feels true on stage. Sure. So some things can be true but not feel true and then that's not good because what you don't ever want is you don't want when you say a premise you don't want the the audience to be like oh you're just making this up for a punchline sure yeah i sometimes struggle with stories because oh this is very we'll leave stand-up comedy behind after this but where i like kind of one-liners where they can be absurd twists you know yeah. something something so so exaggerated for the punchline but if i'm telling a story sometimes you lose track of well is this story true at all right and it's like oh no it is i just for this one line i wanted to go here yeah but and then this forget- really was a situation i yeah, was in i have a lot of true stories i tell and then little moments get changed Mm-hmm. And I forget what the real story was, you know, oh, I mean? all the time. But I do think there should be some. But I, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's more like, do you whether it's true or not? I there's girls writing a joke by me, and uh, it was something about like she was with a magician who had a micro penis, and I'm like, there's something about that where it's like, when you hear it, you're like, I see a joke coming, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's true, you're like, you know. Oh, it was, you hooked up with a magician and they had a micro penis. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, I was yeah. like, maybe yeah, small dick. Many, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but to me, it's like, even if that was true, it's it's more about whether it feels true or not, you know? Sure. Um, and that's... Uh, that's going to suck if you have that scenario and they're like, no one believes you. <laughs> You're like, well, like, stop lying. But then it, then it got to a point where I was like, but even, there's a way you can sell that where it is, makes it true, sure. but you have to be a little aware of it. You can't just be like, so I was with a magician with a micro penis. You have to be like, you're not going to believe this, but I was with a magician and they had a micro penis. I swear to God. Like you have to like, sure. you have to convince them kind of. But sometimes if I do an hour, like I'm like, how many more times am I going to say, I, I swear, swear this God. is true. I swear I to God, this is true. Yeah. Please believe me. I, know. I yeah. always watch. And then half the time I'm lying. And then they go like, yeah, yeah okay. I know we're swearing to God in vain. I swear, so much. To, God. I swear to God, but this is true. That's, Please. But we are, we are saying swear to God because we are trying to really, I think with comedy, it's like a fish was a the two, two second memory. The audience knows it's stand up, but every they just keep on forgetting that you're about to tell a joke. And yeah, so that's the key. You have to keep on making them forget you're about to tell a joke, and you just go through that in like a cycle. You know what I yeah. mean? Because they always know a punchline is essentially coming. But if you just like make them forget you're telling a joke, then it feels real and funny. You know. Maybe that's why they do that Jesus thing with with black comics. They talk about Jesus. They're like, no, we're going to be sincere now. Right. I mean, but do you lick balls? But that's why so much comedy too. You're like, if you don't care about what you're saying on stage, it can show to the audience. So that's so hard to like care to keep on caring about something you do over and over and again. And that, mm-hmm. that's that's the real struggle to figure yeah. out a way to like. I mean, it's like it's very much it is acting where you have to like. Cause There's pretty, times I remember I'm like, turn on the acting, Chamarco. Like, no, it, it's act. I mean, it's acting in the sense that like when you. I mean, I'm not a great actor, but I've acted in plays and I've I've understood that like you're not trying to say the line the same way every night. Mm-hmm. You're trying to be present. You know what I mean? And that is true for stand up. You you need. You, you, Stand up is the greatest enemy of stand up is, is uh, roteness and repetition and fighting that and remembering what was funny about the joke so you can say it differently and try to convey the emotion to the audience, not I'm going to say this in a rhythmic way and I'll get a laugh. Mm-hmm. But which we all do. I mean, I'm, I still do that a lot, you know? Sure. But the best is when you find yourself, oh, I'm saying it differently tonight. I, it's becoming real, you know what I mean? Yeah. Again, because so much of comedy is just like, it's a basically something funny happened and you're just repeating that over and over and over again, you know? Yeah. 
Um, so, you know, I don't know. I was just going on a tangent. I don't know. I'm on the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that last thing before we get to go to uh, this has got to stop. I think you're, we're going to do it. This has got to stop today. So get ready, Russell. What? Shut up. Uh, your mom's a third grade teacher. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Did you ever take her class? No, no, no. I, I, I went to school at Jewish day school and she taught at like public school. Were um, you wearing a yarmulke as a kid? No, no, no. We're conservative. We weren't that fucking Jewy. Um, conservative is less conservative, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, so just, funny. Orthodox, it's just funny for the word conservative to mean like, well, we weren't crazy. We were just conservative. It's actually kind of crazy because it actually conservative is like very feminist and egalitarian. Uh, it, it's like orthodox kind of like with or- orthodox like you know the men and the women are separate and the women don't do anything during the service yeah you know what i mean but with conservative it's like the women it's everyone's at the same you know every it's not there's not a mechita wall it's all connected and uh and the, the the women can be rabbis or do do stuff on stage so it's like kind of like a more liberal version of orthodox the thing that's conservative is that it's conserving the deeds, like the Jewish deeds, kosher and all that. Yeah. It wants to, you know, for most of Judaism, it's about kind of the deeds themselves. That was like a, that's like the core part of just doing the deeds. And the faith will come later. The faith is not as important as a commitment to the deeds, the observances. Do you, as as a, a fellow cynic and mm-hmm. comedian, do you have any respect for the deeds, the traditions? Yes, I don't follow them, but I have a lot of respect for Judaism. Uh, I have a lot of respect for all religions, but I have a lot of respect for Judaism. I think uh, you have a lot of respect for all religions. Well, <laughs> that's going too far. Uh, I don't have a lot of respect for all religions, but I understand the. I definitely understand the value of religion, mm-hmm. even if I'm not religious. I understand, like I understand how it helps people, and, do, do, uh, and do, I do understand with Judaism, like. The deeds, I understand psychologically how that's very crucial because the more you do the deeds, the more that will control sure. your beliefs later on. I just feel like sometimes like comedy, I mean, in a way you could say comedy, you need you need the the code for comedy to poke fun at it. You need like it's kind of a yin and yang yeah. in a way. Mm-hmm. But it sometimes feels like they're counter. You know, right. it's like if I see a tradition of splitting the men and the women, like my comedy brain is like, well, this is insane. Oh, of course. Uh, and I make fun of all that. But I don't know. I Deeds in general, like observing Sabbath or all that stuff. I mean, the truth is I feel like a lot of that shit would help me to not have to not look at your phone for a whole day. Sure. I do think that would be good. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? And uh, And there are certain things that are, you know, I think. Good in religion. I mean, watch my grandpa was religious, and when he was older, his wife died. He would go to synagogue every day, and I feel like mm-hmm. that's definitely like a a helpful thing. You know what I mean? I sure. think uh, I think people who dismiss religion completely or dismiss it without any um, conflict in their heart are kind of like uh, not being honest to how. F- fucked up and crazy the world is without any kind of system. Absolutely. Yeah. I just think like in order to hold on to those tenets, there has to be a part of you that also believes in the thing. Me? No, I'm saying I'm saying to follow those tenets so strictly like I understand people being like, "Well, I can't get I couldn't imagine doing all these things without believing in some kind of god." I think I don't know. I think I think most people are agnostic. In their sure. Heart. Yeah. Sure. But like, but like but I, I don't see how you could be like a real like atheist priest unless you were just in it for the boys. <laughs> I mean, like other other than that though, I can't imagine like not having at least a hope well, or, or well, a, here's the thing, Christianity is different. That's the thing. I'm saying Christianity, one of the big things Jesus did was he picked up sticks on Saturday. That was him showing everyone the deeds don't you're not allowed to pick up shit on Saturday. That was him showing the deeds don't matter, the faith is what's important. So the break from Judaism to Christianity was essentially a break from the deeds. I didn't know that story. The, I like that. Just have the belief in faith. You know what I mean? And then reform Jews were like, yeah, we shouldn't follow the deeds. We should just have faith. They're like, but Christianity already did that. <laughs> <laughs> that was Christianity. But, uh, but so like, so like that is, it is harder to imagine a priest doing that. A rabbi, mm. I could see it. You know, definitely people in the synagogue. My dad follows stuff, but he's agnostic, you know. Do you have any good, like, like street jokes, Jew street jokes? 
I thought of one. I don't know if it's good. Sometimes I think of street jokes. I just it's just a fun thing to do. I love street jokes. I, I rarely think of them. I know. I thought of one. It's so stupid. I tell it's like um why couldn't the Jew eat out his wife on Passover? Why? She had a yeast infection. Do you get that? I don't because you can't have eat? yeast. You can't have yeast on Passover. I see. Mott says without yeast. I think it's funny because, like, the community where that would work, you can't say that joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, they might. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yom Kippur is a hot Jewish holiday where the Jews uh, feel guilty, uh-huh. which is like if the Amish set a day aside to farm. <laughs> That's good. That's I like right. that. That's fun, right? That's, That's good. I like that. Yeah. But I want to call that a street joke. That's a stand-up joke. Yeah, that might be just be a... What's the deal That's just might with be Yom a formula Kippur? stand-up joke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of a kid's street joke. What? I thought of a, ki- like a oh, kid's yeah. joke once. So I only... Ki- uh, what did the fish say to the other fish after he got dumped? What? Don't worry. There's plenty of people on land. That's great. That's, That's a good, good. yeah. It's, but uh, I but try- how many kids have heard the term? There's other fish. I know it actually seen. doesn't work for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally it's like only adults who wouldn't find it funny get it. Because I'm like, which kids would get this? <laughs> I love coming up with a joke of like street jokes that cannot work with the intended yeah. audience. There's no street that that ex- that, that, that would work on. <laughs> it's like all it is is for adults to be like, oh, that's a kids joke. Even I bet you the woman that wrote me. That's the kind she of joke that it. she she'd wants. Love that. Or Something she'd write like me that. an angry email. How dare, <laughs> yeah, you, how dare you compare <laughs> fish to people? Um, let's go on to our next segment. I love segment. to laugh. This yeah. has got to stop. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Um, I don't think you read the email. Do you know this segment? Yeah, I mean, she's saying uh, yeah, something. something. Yeah, yeah. Something. I, I looked at it. Yeah. Oh, good. Just something that's got to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's got to stop? Are we, we're, we're all just pretending this is the new rules. <laughs> 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 what has got to stop? No, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I read it. I didn't think about it. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll go. You start one. For, I'll, I'll go. go, go, go one way. Got one, so uh, this we we did this show last week. I don't know if you were there when this happened, but it's happened to me again last night. So many men, straight men, I assume they're straight, cannot compliment you after a show, and I imagine can't compliment their friends either without doing this. They think it's gay. Yeah, they they, yeah. they need to do so. This guy, I did the show uh, at Sesh Comedy Club, mm-hmm. and some guy he was driving past. He said, "Hey, you suck." I'm just kidding. We had a great time tonight. Oh, fuck and, off. And it happened at the country club show where this guy came over. And it, it was so out of the blue for a second. I had a moment of like, what the fuck's going on? And he was like, you guys were the worst comedians I've ever seen. I had a great time. I'm just kidding. Also, he said, you suck. And then he said, just kidding. I had a great time. So he didn't even like say you were good. <laughs> he didn't even yeah. He's, he didn't, it's not like the, it's not like <laughs> he didn't redeem the thing he said. He said, you suck. Just kidding. Show was pretty good. Like it wasn't yeah. like, it should have been like, you just kidding. You're great. Yeah. 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 That's awful. Also, when a guy comes up to you afterwards, like, hey, that's pretty good. It's like I'd rather you just say nothing. I'd rather, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd rather yeah, you. Yeah. I'd rather not know what you felt. The kind, the kind of like you know, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, I didn't choose to have no retirement in my life to hear pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just such an interesting impulse where like, part of it, I think like they want to be like you know I'm pretty funny too, like because it's a joke essentially. They're yeah. doing a not. Yeah, that's what it is. Yes. Yeah, it's people try to be funny. It's a weird thing. I have I have like some like podcast fans who are like mean, and they're just trying to be like familiar to me, but they don't know how to do it. So it's just yeah. mean. Like I posted a picture of myself. I was like, I think I look okay in this picture, but I'm self conscious about my weight. And it was a picture like, please, uh, or it's asking for something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. And then someone just commented on it or like message like they go, "Shut up, pig," and I'm like, <sighs> "What's the point of this?" <laughs> and they're like. Oh, I'm just a fan of the podcast, and I don't think you're really fat, but I know it's like you make what? jokes about it. <laughs> what do you and think? I'm like, I'm like, so I just thought it was funny, and I'm like, but you didn't explain any of that. You did, you, you just said, in, shut up. I want to know in their dream scenario, like, like it's interesting when people do something like that. What in their mind is the ideal outcome? They, like, shut up, pig, and you're like, ha ha. Like, yeah, they think I'm gonna laugh. Well, the, the, yeah. he thinks I know what he's thinking. He thinks I know he's. You a, reply like, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I yeah. know you don't mean it, and so. <laughs> It's a compliment. But they, I get that all the time. It's like people comment like, uh, you fat, ugly Jew, you should have died of the Holocaust. Love the pod. Uh, like, you know, it's just like whatever. It's just like, yeah. 
Uh, that's, that's why. That's why I'm like. Tim Dillon is like crushing it, but his fans must be so mean. They oh, must yeah. just be like, hey, fat fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's, it's a scary thing to, fans are scary. Yeah. Fans are scary. I don't have like, I'm not saying I have like a lot of fans, but like there's a pressure. There's a weight when someone writes you and they're like, this meant a lot. Or they'll be like, my family's fucked up too. Or if they yeah. say stuff like that, like it's you, are, yeah. what, you have to think about like what it is you're cultivating. I mean, your, your podcast is about movies, people who like yeah. movies. Yeah. And most of them are that's fine. That's not but toxic. That's not a toxic no. magnet. No, no, no. But no. some magnets that people use, it's like you're getting some no. crazies. We did a Patreon where I was really yelling about the Will Smith shit, getting pretty angry. Uh -huh. And we started getting so many Patreon members. And I'm like, ooh, I think I'm tapping into that angry white guy. I got to be careful. Because oh. the minute you tap into that. You know, people. Yeah. People start. Yeah. You know, you know there but, was definitely that. That like, like Will. What Will Smith did was wrong, and then other people are like, like the worst is like what Will Smith did is a poor reflection on the black community, and you're like, stop. Yeah, stop, I know. You moron. And I you, wouldn't say idiot. I wasn't saying anything racial, but I was being angry and saying it's not about race. I was saying sure. it's about a fucking narcissistic. Douchebag, but that's, that's the problem. The nuance. There's, there's yeah. plenty of guys yeah. who, but then people are like, yeah, he's angry, and he's You're saying like, not everything's about race. Yeah. If you really think about slavery, it. wasn't even about race. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's tough, but you can't control. Once again, you can't control how people are going to react. You shouldn't, but that at the same time, you should not feed into it deliberately. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You shouldn't feed into it deliberately. And I don't like the thing about Joe Rogan is, I disagree with a lot of what he says. I don't know if he's calculatingly feeding into something. I think he believed these things. You know what I mean? Sure. And it's not, like, illegal to be an idiot. And yeah. I know people are like, well, he should realize what he's saying and realize his responsibility, but he thinks he's right. He doesn't... He's not like, I know I'm dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, I think it's like... Again, where it's like they're listening to Joe Rogan instead of the traditional media. And part of it's like, well, you want to know why? Because the traditional media fucked yeah. up for so fucking long and have lied. This, and, that, and, and the Joe other. And Joe Rogan is, would be a fan of himself. So it's like, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Just, he's not like, he's not I a. I just can't imagine ever in my like life Trump. having like a point of view on a medical thing that went against popular opinion. Yeah. That's the part where I'm like, I can't imagine doing that well he is his fans in the sense that it's false skepticism yeah it, he's skeptic of mainstream stuff but then very ready to believe a a, a blog <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's like false skepticism you yeah. know mm -hmm. and it's uh and he is a conspiracy theorist i'm not look I'm, what he says is often quite dumb <laughs> um <laughs> and but I, I guess I don't. I guess I think he's allowed. You're allowed to. You say can't what blame you want. him for there being dumb people. Yeah, and I don't think he's fostering hate. I just think he believes stupid shit. You know. And yeah. Again, it's, yeah. again, it's, it's like if you want to be mad at dumbness, you got to look at the things that were supposed to fix. Dumbness yeah, and, and the, so the, the levers that stop it. So demanding he get off Spotify to me is just like insane. I mean, I get that you're allowed to ask for something or demand yeah. something, but like. It's also just like you know, Spotify is not going to drop him. He, they just paid. Well, they made more money. They just paid a hundred million dollars. Like they're not going to be like, ah, never mind. It is funny the two artists who left, like thinking they'd start a movement, and now they're just not on Spotify. Anymore. Joni Mitchell, yeah, and Joni Mitchell, and, and Neil Young, Neil Young. Yeah, and I, but, but then yeah, he went they, to Amazon too. It's like there's a certain degree of yeah. like if you're going to participate in the capitalist society, you're you're using services. Yeah. Well, the the problem was like. And I, I don't begrudge. They're allowed to do that too. But what the yeah. problem is, is like, with like believing in some moral absolutes, is that life is so complicated that often there is no right answer. And the thing you think is the right answer actually will make things worse too. Yeah. So it's like it's like with Rachel Carson. She had that book, uh, uh, Silent Sprig, where they got rid of. It was a book about showing how uh, DTTs can cause are carcinogenics. You know, the insect mm -hmm. spray, and they got rid of them. And then a lot of people believe that uh, kept. Mosquito allowed mosquitoes to be more prevalent, which caused uh, malaria that killed millions of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like it's like life is so complicated that, and I don't, you know, who knows? I don't know if the, all the facts on that, but life is so complicated that like there's not always one right answer. And the fact that Neil Young is then just going to Amazon, yeah, which is like Amazon is 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 the worst. You know what I mean? So like there is, we're all forced to be hypocrites. And so to have to pretend some kind of virtuousness when we're all like we have no choice but to be culpable in a system that's 
corrupt. I remember with Twitter, like people were quoting Twitter and then some, a handicapped person posted like, please don't ask us to leave this app for, for handicapped people. Uh, this is a gigantic platform for community and blah, yeah, blah, blah. It's just course. like, yeah, it's, it's all complicated. It's all complicated and you're going to offend someone and it's like, yeah, it's just, I mean, yeah, I don't, uh. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it, but I don't always know. It's easy to to go like that's ah, complicated, so I don't have to make any moral decisions at all. Yeah, like that's, that's, this. it's hard to have that balance. You know what I mean? But your moral decisions need to be aware of the complex yes. nature of things. You know what I mean? And something like Joe Rogan on Spotify, I think, is a complex thing. I don't think it's an easy yeah. answer. Of like he needs to be off. You know what I mean? I don't think that's such an easy. Yeah, answer, I mean, know? again, it's the same thing with free speech where. On the reverse side, Elon Musk is like free speech, and you're like, well, it's not that it's not that simple. Yeah, with it's not that simple with the internet. That's an no. insane. That's an insane to say. Like that's what I thought when I was in fifth grade. I was like, free speech means whatever, whenever. Yeah, you can't like, yell. That's not. That's not. That's not it. And with the internet, it magnifies the the fire example of you yeah, can't you yell can't fire yell in a crowded yeah. movie theater. But that's also before the internet. And it's like there's a version of you can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater that applies to social media. Yes. Yes, of course. And there's things that, like, the problem is, is, like, having to prove that someone's deliberately lying in what they're saying yeah. is a hard thing to prove because they could just be like, well, I just believe it. You sure. know what I mean? Um, um, do you have a This Has Got to Stop? Do you yeah, I have one? a couple. People who, um, people who share, I mean, this is all what, but people who share a tweet or something and they go, this, this, oh, my list really came out. <laughs> this, just <laughs> just one this. word, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If all those people were executed, I think the world would be a better place. Um, uh, anyone who begins a tweet with, so let me get this straight. Oh, you know, so yeah, let me yeah, get this yeah. straight. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> all those people are the worst. I hate, I hate, I needed this today. Yeah. Uh, if you needed a video of a puppy yeah, yeah. petting a bird, then yeah. you, you are not made for not this Not wearing world. headphones oh. on the subway, just yeah. playing speakers, you know? Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Uh. That's the worst. I had it on the plane the other day. The person next really? to me was watching TikTok with no no headphones. Thank God they lost reception eventually. Yeah, <laughs> but like for a second, I was like, I was like, really it's insane. Yeah, and I, of course, they didn't say a single word. No, but it was just like I no, could I could not believe it. Yeah, um, playing really loud music at Starbucks, which is insane. I went to Starbucks the other day. It was like I was at like a rock that, concert. Them, I was like the baristas playing. Yeah, like, like, yeah, 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 like like yeah. as the music for the store. I'm like, yeah. I'm literally yelling at my friend, like, "What are you having?" It's yeah. like we're fucking at Metallica. It's well, insane. There was a funny thing at Starbucks for a long time where I think they were forced to listen to like. Like this is years ago, they were forced to listen to like whatever Starbucks was like promoting. So it would no. be like quiet indie rock, and it was always we'll so go funny in New York because it would be like like these black baristas like clearly like yeah. have no choice in the music that's being played there. But there has been a change in the last few years where sometimes you go into a Starbucks and it is like blaring. Yeah, no, no, go back to Starbucks can complete control. <laughs> it's awful. Just Nora Jones, and it's bad for like. Customer service, like, how are you typing in this? You know what I mean? Like, or sure. working on shit. But that's, but that's what they want. They don't want you to stay there. You yeah, know, that's the so. thing. That's the thing, and you can feel it. And that's when places become awful, where you feel them being like, "Please leave." I feel so like Starbucks money. became popular because people stayed there. I feel like that was such a. But then they had such a huge problem. I had a joke where I said uh, I went to, I made a donation to my favorite homeless shelter, this place called Starbucks, because there was yeah. a time, at least in New York, where it was like, yeah, it was, it no, was wild. True. It was wild. Just yeah, it people. used to be the library was a homeless shelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every library is like, ah, want to go to the homeless shelter? They have the best books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that's one. Um, uh, I'm trying to think other ones. Um, any stand up who says that. Makes a comment about something that's just not real anymore. You know what I mean? Like I heard a, co- a comic the other day being like, uh, "Watch, uh, you know, when they come out of these new horror movies, the black guy always dies first. And I'm like, "That is so not true anymore." Yeah. To the point where it's the oh, opposite. When I see yeah. a black guy in a horror movie, I'm yeah, like, "Yeah, well, get out! He made it to the end." I'm like, "He's definitely gonna make it to the end, and yeah. he's definitely not gonna be the bad guy." It actually, if anything, ruins. <laughs> if it's like, oh, he's definitely not gonna be yeah. bad or get killed. So see, I'm but like, that's, not that's nervous the bit now, where it's like. What? You, that, I think like the bit now is like you can tell a horror movie that where there's a black guy. You're like, he's going to make it to the end. He's not going to die. That should be the bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, that is yeah. what's prevalent. Yeah. I mean, and I actually think a lot of that, like the trigger war, oh, trigger warnings on TV shows. I really hate 
because it ruins the narrative. Like I, yeah. I see like there's a trigger warning. The main character oh, well, dies. Well, yeah. we, we were, our, our friend was just talking to us the other day. It was I think it was an episode of The Crown, and it had a trigger warning about Believe. eating disorders. Yeah. But then it was like in the episode there was like an orphanage that was like bombed. <laughs> but it was like it was like this thing where you're like, there's no. Trigger well, yeah, because they're thinking about the annoying people who are gonna complain. It's not gonna be orphans. <laughs> you're like, uh, I I hate it. I, I was talking to someone from Germany the other day and like just, you know, they're, they don't really censor much, at least cursing wise. Yeah. And I, I made me so mad. It was it was when Russia was invading and they Russia told some island in Ukraine, give us the island. And they wrote back, fuck off or something. Yeah. And the news was like they wrote back an expletive. We're not going to say now and here's then a, Russia here's, blew them into a million pieces. Here's footage of a head rolling down the street. Yeah. It's, um, it's insane. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like, obviously I think it's good that our world is not like, I think it's good that we can offer comfort in this world, but like, uh, you know, it's everything's a balance, but this idea that, um, this idea that trauma is something that's escapable in life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I have a thing about like trauma is life. I don't know what the answer is because sometimes I'm like when there's a war where there's always I mean or when there's a genocide it's like this idea of like well please don't show this on the news. Yeah. And it's like well war is really bad. You might right. as well see it. Of oh you course. want to go to the news? Here's the picture of what's happening. Yeah. This is what's happening. Of course. We want to hear a cuter version of it. Like, if you're uncomfortable with it, then don't go to the news. Yeah, where does being triggered mean, like, oh, I just don't want to empathize with other people's problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just hate it for narratives because I feel like it ruins... You know it's going to happen. I feel right? like it's ruined it many times, yeah. I've, I, I saw one recently that said there's self-harm, and then there's a scene where you, you kind of foreshadowing it a little, but it used to be like... Oh, what's gonna happen now? You're like, oh, she's gonna commit suicide right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I could totally, I could, I, I mean, I could be like, please don't talk about death. It's, it's, it, it triggers me because it, it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but triggering. First of all, triggering means you're alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not dead inside. And like, I don't know. I guess I, to me, good art should be triggering. I don't know. Isn't triggering just bringing of up course. emotions? I think you should, I should, I could say sometimes happy things trigger me. Please, yeah. don't, please don't show a healthy it's also not that the, makes me sad it's about one, my life. Another liberal thing, it's not the art's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the art's fault if you're getting triggered. If you're getting triggered, I mean, that sucks. I guess if it's awful, but th go to therapy. I don't know. That's not, yeah. like, go to therapy and deal with it. Don't, like, you know... Don't refuse to have it seen in anywhere in life. That's certainly not psychologically healthy. Yeah. You know, like this idea of like the eating disorder. Like if yeah. you can't watch something because someone's going to throw up. If, if you, like if Princess, fake Princess Diana throwing yeah, up having an industry. Yeah. You know, like, get triggered and talk about it in therapy and work on that. But the fact that we're like adjusting the world for this is insane because it's yeah. not good for anyone, you know? Um, well, let's uh, let's move on to our final segment. You better count your blessings. Whenever a guest doesn't have headphones, I always feel like they're oh, yeah. like I'm an idiot. Yeah. And I'm like, well, there's music playing. Hear, there, there's, a, there's a whole song. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> um, Trust uh, me, when you're not talking, I know there's a good reason. <laughs> Russell, do you have a blessing? Uh, you share? go first. You go first. What the fuck? Well, you go first. You, th you threw that curveball. Well, at me. I, you, I always go first, and, just, and sometimes it could inform me if I can hear what you're gonna do. You know, because you've you've done explain that nice the logic. Thing, explain the logic to that bullshit. I sentence just, just, you just go said. first. I always go first. I'm asking you to go first for fucking once. Okay, all right. Uh, so I wanted to. I did want to give a shout out to uh, my feature and my host from the Looney Bin Comedy Club. We had a really good time. Who was it? Uh, it was, I'm making sure I got the names out, Lawrence Rosales mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Colton, and Colton's last name will remain, Colton Jones. And they are uh, two Dallas guys. Um, I, I always enjoy, uh, cause since I didn't start in like a smaller scene, like I'm always like fascinated by how scenes function. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the ways that they're thriving and the ways that they're struggling. Um, and uh, they were cool. They did workout classes with me. Like I, I think about how comics used to do cocaine and we're yeah. fucking people. And for me, it was like, hey, let's we got a CrossFit class, a yoga jokes, class, yeah. and then a Planet Fitness day. Yeah, that's we nice. went to the uh, Oklahoma City National Memorial, which is for the it. Oklahoma City bombing. I love that museum. This this museum was incredible. Like as a comedian, you go no there and trigger you're like, warning, which I was very upset by. What was that? They had no trigger warning in the museum. No trigger warning at all. But talk about it turned a museum. out to be sad, and I was not prepared for that. Uh, 
if, uh, clearly it was designed by like a very good artist. Like there, there's this beautiful memorial. Like one side says 9:01 p.m. and across this lake and chairs representing each person that died. It says 9:03 p.m. and the whole metaphor that they kept going with was between 9:01 and 9:03, everyone's lives changed. And they, they, the way this museum start, you go in a room. That room, that room is true. Oh my the god, the room where they have the audio of the boardroom. So you go in a room and it's just like kind of a, a fake boardroom. And they play audio. I guess it's a, a, it's a like a meeting, building. a real yeah. audio of a meeting right before the explosion. Oh my and, god! And you go in there, and there's no countdown or anything, so you're just hearing this meeting. And you know, at some point, you're going to hear a huge explosion oh, and people Jesus. freaking out. And and right when you hear the explosion, they flash the the pictures of everyone who who died. And like it's pretty that, cool. It's like Oklahoma City bombing the ride. You know? Wow. <laughs> the the um, how many people died in that? I don't remember. Like. It w- was it 300 and something? Oh, right? it's like hundreds. Yeah, okay. it, yeah, it was pretty. I feel like it was 168, but it could have been. Oh, was it just 168? Just made, 168. That's nothing. <laughs> pre 9 11, though. I mean, that was yeah. pretty I mean it, it, was, it was significant. And something about that moment, like, it was very theatrical. I mean, it was a very, like, theatrical, yeah, experiential. It and it put you into the. The mood, and I feel like you can only do that because it was a long time ago. I do not think For you could do that with 9 11. No. I don't think it could be like this is the building, and then you hear like a yeah, and then like a plane yeah, yeah. coming well, close you, to the window. You, you, but you, it would get you ready for the, it would get you in the mood yeah. for a yeah, memorial. No, probably not. I, uh, yeah, no, it's a great museum. They have that one tree that's still standing. You know, um, the, you know. talk, talk about a joke that never worked. There was that guy who, who, was rebuilding the Titanic and it was like the idea of making a ride out of this thing that was like a true tragedy. Uh-huh. And the joke was saying like some, that means that in a hundred years they're going to give you plane rides to where the towers used to be. Uh-huh. Like the idea of like you would go on a plane and they'd show you like, and then it went down and like this <laughs> and it all, I mean, always the was like, absolutely not. Yeah, We're yeah. not on board for this, but it is just always fascinating how, you can joke. I've done college shows. And you talk about nine eleven, and for them, some of them weren't alive for it. Yeah. yeah, And to them, it's like the Titanic in the sense they know it's like it's like a Lincoln joke. Yeah, they know it's like ooh, this is wrong, but they don't have the emotional like feeling sad about it, so they can yeah. just enjoy it. Right. I have a nine eleven joke in my special actually, but it's, um, but it works. But it's also because it's not really about. It's not I really tried one in Oklahoma of, City and it, it tanked. <laughs> it's not really about like making fun of the tragedy i guess you know what i mean sure um but yeah no it's it's tough to do for sure there was um i can't remember if we talked about there was a one time there was like a vulture article it was like jokes that comedians regret and what was so funny what was so funny to me is that there was an older comedian i can't remember who it was it was the bald guy with the gap with the gap oh, tooth paul uh what's his sheer uh what's uh paul sheer yeah. paul sheer i yeah. think maybe um, basically said that like the week after 9-11 he did this thing like a bit where it was like person covered in ashes like uh, uh, like being interviewed right after the tragedy and like but it was a stand up trying to like w- work out bits like in, yeah. it, right after the thing and, and he said you know in hindsight like it was like too soon and it, t- it was it made people uncomfortable blah 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 but what was so funny about that article is like there was that example and then there was like some people being like, I used to make fun of being myself being fat. Uh, like, <laughs> fuck you. It's really, <laughs> it was so funny. really made me laugh. I was watching when Louis like, Anderson just, died. I watched a lot of Louis Anderson <laughs> yeah. uh, videos. And he had he kept talking about how he was like, you know, I'm not really telling fat jokes anymore. I used to tell this great one, though. And then he'd go right into <laughs> yeah, it. And yeah. it would murder. And it was so funny. because it was I love like, how that's like the Richard Pryor. I'm no longer saying the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so do you have a blessing yet? Yes. Um, uh, I'm going to give it to, um, our, our friend Chris Caffaro, um, because he did a lot of work, uh, and, um, he's just so reliable when it comes to the uncle function stuff. And, um, this, is the this weekend was, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, and then, uh, we had a lot of, we had a couple things this weekend and, um, he just is a, you know, reliable boy and, and, and is always like pulling through and I don't want him to move to LA. <laughs> We have a friend. It's it feels like just some friends moving to LA. Mm-hmm. My my girlfriend is is currently at the Netflix is a joke festival. Yes, and, you know she's she's like writing me like you know Judd Apatow's here, and I'm like, well, I'm in Oklahoma. There's a bunch of Juds here, <laughs> but none of them have produced a movie. <laughs> and she's like, she's bit by the LA bug. Which yeah, is, of course. You know, you it's go there, nice. yeah. you do one set, you're the best in the fucking room, yeah. and then someone wants to off your pilot. You're like, why the fuck am I not here? I know, I know, yeah. 
Uh, I'm grateful that this podcast is finally over. Um, <laughs> You're the tenth one to say that. I but know. Go for Am it. I, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, really? You're oh, the no. first. And first? It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Some people have fucking manners, but go for it. <laughs> I was holding that in for uh, like ten minutes. I'm like, fucking When's kill. the blessing come up? Because I is uh, gonna fucking <laughs> Oh no. Um. What am I? I'm grateful. Um. That. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> what about the woman who gave you the hand job? I mean, she's clearly did a good for job. For her, uh, she was Ukrainian, so I was I wasn't standing with Ukraine, but I was lying down <laughs> with Ukraine. And uh, very good, very good. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm grateful for uh, comedy. I'm grateful that I fucking don't have a day job. I feel like I scammed the system, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm grateful that uh, Ukraine is, uh, I think, at this point, kind of winning. You know, mm-hmm. they didn't bow down. Um, and uh yeah good i don't know <laughs> grateful for ukraine um uh well this uh, let me figure out when this is gonna come out exactly if there's anything you want to plug you're doing bricktown soon right in uh two months or something yeah yeah that's in oklahoma that's near oklahoma city right it is in oklahoma city um so this is coming out may 17th so anything after the 17th that you want to plug, Russell? Anything you want to plug? May seventeenth. Uh, n- no, because I don't know the June dates, so no. Great, um, uh, Renan. Anything you want to plug? Yeah. Well, most importantly, uh, I have a special on YouTube now called Downhill Ever Since. It's from 2019, and I'm going to have a new special coming out in the next two months. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. I got to get the numbers up. Uh, you can subscribe to it. Just go to my Instagram, Ranan Comedy, R A A N A N Comedy. And in the bio, there'll be a link to my uh, YouTube channel. Also, in that bio is a link to all my uh, upcoming shows. I'm going to be, yeah, a bunch of places in Seattle. A uh, um, uh, bunch of places. <laughs> I kept good, thinking good, of them good. all now. And yeah. you have a podcast. Oh, yeah. Joe and Ron on Talk Movies with Joe List. Um, so uh, my upcoming dates this Saturday, if I'm correct, May 21st, headlining Atlantic City Comedy Club. Comics Mohegan Sun, May 26th to 28th. Uh, Lowell, Arkansas. No way we have any listeners in Lowell, Arkansas. Uh, so skip it. And then June, I'm going to be in San Diego. I'm going to be in San Francisco, Seattle, L.A. Uh, then Tova's birthday, which I am not doing anything this time. No shows this time. No shows. I've, that's for sure. And that's what I want, too. I want to be clear. It's not just because Tova wants it. I want it as well. Good. Um, but uh, check the site and uh, Sesh Comedy Club The Silver Lining which is normally the first Sunday of every month we had one yesterday it was sold out it was fucking awesome the next one is July 3rd I had to skip a month because I'm headlining in Brea, California but July 3rd uh, Sesh it's called The Silver Lining it's the sister show to this podcast and I think I convinced Russell in August to do a live podcast taping before the next one sure Uh, but uh, oh, I like to. I like to uh, just remember, like Spinoza said, uh, "God is everything," which I guess conversely means God is nothing too. Nothing matters. He was autistic and Jewish. This is the downside. One, two, three. <laughs>